All right, here we go. It's Sunday morning, the recap, the recap of the week, the recap of the live stream. Hope everybody's doing good. Got the third dose of caffeine. I've already tweaked a couple of mixes this morning. Um, I'll probably go back to them a little bit later on this afternoon and touch up a couple of things. I'm going to take a walk and sort of A, B some things on my walk with my little Beats headphones. Um, I'll try and keep it quick, as usual. Maybe I'll ramble. The live stream was somewhat epic. I wasn't expecting a four and a half hour live stream on Friday because, quite frankly, I didn't think I was in the mood. And I kind of wasn't in the mood. Um... But then I was enticed into getting in the mood. And part of that was going on a, a bit of a tear and a rant. And as someone told me yesterday, who I was talking to about a studio setup, he, and he happened to watch the, or he was part of the stream, he said, uh, yeah, sometimes people aren't used to, that, to that, uh, that New York studio guy humor or whatever, but you know, and w listen, when you've been involved in that for as many years as I have, it's just normal stuff, you know. So when you, when, when I crack on something or maybe poke at something a little bit, it's nothing personal. It's just, it's studio talk, it's studio chat, and it's going to continue. I think my, the live stream might be the live stream to, the worst live stream to ever happen to hip hop channels in history it might be that might be the title i gotta look for a i gotta look for an effed up title just to uh mess with somebody i got a nice voicemail i guess i got it i think i got it yesterday no i got it the 16th yeah sometime yesterday oh six o'clock yesterday um some phone call came in i didn't take it because the phone number didn't look familiar at all uh, I forgot about it this morning. I saw it like, oh, yeah, I have a voicemail. First of all, who leaves voicemails anymore? Me? Or maybe once in a while, you know, hey, it's me. Bye. Um, so it was from Herb Powers. Uh, really kind of a cool phone call. He, I had sent him a mix for a client during the week. They were, they were using him to do their mastering because it's like a, you know, it's a big project for them. And um, Herb and I go way back, probably about oh, over 25 years. And, uh, you know, I had emailed his office with my with the Dropbox and the, the info for the for the song, you know, gave him a little like, hey, man, it's always great to work with you and everything. But he sent me like this really cool, left me a really cool voicemail, basically saying, what's up? I mean, look. The guy's a legend. He is. Um, that's why he's been in the business so long, because he's a he's a great dude. He does great work and he's great to work with. Uh, you know, and just took the time, which to me is important. Herb Powers. If you're not hiring, if you're if you're looking for someone that gets you that sound, Herb's Herb's comp Herb's whole thing does it. Herb, and it's it's been doing it forever. It's a big part of the '90s hip hop sound, that's for sure, and R and B. Um, so yeah, we talked about a bunch of stuff. We even got into an etch a sketch challenge at the end. Like if you're not taking part in our Friday night craziness, and it is not a normal live stream. This is not a. Uh, it's a hang. The Friday night thing, the layer cake gang is a hang, and. Um, we get a pretty good, pretty good number of people, a crazy number of chat messages, something like 2,500 in the last one. And I'm trying to like see these things as they're coming through. Uh, it's a scene. It's a scene, man, as they say. Um, so what am I working on the rest of the weekend? Is it going to be touching up these mixes and sending it off to somebody? Um, my new artist is coming out with a single, I think, tomorrow. Tomorrow or Tuesday. I think it's tomorrow. 
I'll try and turn you guys on to that. It's uh, like a pop electronic thing. The Korean anthem is up for Steve Barakat. That's up there and out there. Um, we talked a lot about, like I did a session last week for this app that I've been working with for several months. And I was doing the music creation for it. And it was one of those situations where you, where I've talked about where you never know what you need to be prepared for or what like what what thing you you could be dabbling with someday when you don't have anything to do, but you're like, hey, let me just make sure, let me just dig into this um, to this software synth or whatever because I'm curious and I want to have an understanding of it. And then, sure enough, a year later that thing can come into play as far as being something that you need to work with or, you know, that, like, solves a problem for a client and for you. Uh, we got the morning lighting going on. Um, I, I, I picked up on a video. There's a, there's a few videos circulating, I guess, in the algorithm about recording studios, close, major recording studios closing down and why they are and all that stuff. And there was some accurate speculation on that, uh, you know, budgets have changed, obviously. Uh, people have access to incredible equipment that they can use in their home studios or in their private project studios. But, I mean, one of the factors that is sort of overlooked is that these owners of these legacy studios are retiring or getting out of the business you know they're done they've done their 30 years or whatever 25 50 40 years and recording studios aren't necessarily the type of business that are easily sold like a you know some sort of franchise it's it's usually when the the owner founder checks out or decides that's it, that's it. There's usually not a, um, you know, passing of the torch. The Hit Factory did a bit of one. Troy Germano carried on the Hit Factory after his, after Ed passed and, and after that, those studios closed, Troy kept it going. But, you know, unless... You know, I don't know how long Troy will continue going on with the, with the Hit Factory, and or if and if his son wants to take over at some point. But there will come a time where it's either it's either sold to someone or it goes away. And these these things aren't being rebuilt in the same fashion. So it is what it is. It's different. But someone mentioned that recording studios of that size and that nature are or were um, hospitality venues in a lot of ways. And I, I totally agree with that. Like, that that was, that's a major reason why big artists in particular go to big facilities. It's because they're going there for the service. It's a service business. And a lot of recording studios that are, particularly the owner operator ones where like, you know, the guy that runs the place is the engineer and is, you know, he's the cleaning crew. He's the tech and all that stuff. They've, in a lot of ways, they, those are the ones that forget that it's, it's about service. It's not about, in a lot of ways, it's not about the gear. It's not about the kick drum sound that you get or the drum set that you have in the booth or whatever. It's about, accommodations and things being ready for you and privacy, um, quality of time, of your time service. It's like, you know, why does someone who's a major star stay at the Ritz Carlton when they go to New York? It's not just because they can afford it. It's because they want that kind of service, that kind of privacy and um, that kind of attention, you know, from professionals who are used to providing that type of thing. Just a little bit aside on that. I mean, look, 
who cares about recording studios closing? There's always going to there always be enough. It's not like someone saying, you know, there's nowhere to record. Um, you know, I can't make a record because I can't find a studio. There's studios out there. You can find them. Or you put one in your garage or extra addition on your house like other people do. It's not that big a deal. Um, the, the key is quality people, your team. I don't know whether this camera is ever in focus, to be honest with you. Does it matter? I mean, I'm not like the toe. Yeah, we, we got into the uh, the stream. We got oh, we got into um, a little bit about the toe, and if you know who the toe is, you know. Um, we got into a little bit about some of the other YouTube characters, the space, that whole bit. Um, not everybody's gonna like you know. Not everybody's for everybody. You know what I'm saying. Uh, I'm going to get my walk in. I'm going to get my research in, you know, my evaluation of my current mixes. Uh, I'm going to feel good about the fact that Herb Powers left me a message. And that was a, uh, you know, those things mean something at times where you're like, that's cool. You know, he didn't hate me. Uh, I will talk to you during the week or later on in the week or Friday, depending on what my mood is and what kind of time I have. Hitting the button.